apple and cut off the fruiting part of that, in this case, the cordons. The approximate time for budding over would be April or May, depending on the weather. And they cut this, the top part of the vines off, and then they go ahead and insert a bud from the variety that they want to graft onto these established trunks. This little chip that I have in my hand represents what was removed from this trunk, so that way uh, the bud is slipped in off of the dormant cane for the desired variety. And this is the back side of it or the side that would have been under the bark like this. But anyway, this is the uh, part that's removed. So that way that bud is slipped into that bark area. The new bud is slipped into the bark area. And it could be anywhere as long as the trunk has got a fairly flat and straight surface on it. Wouldn't want to do it where there's already an inner node or something like that, but where the trunk is fairly flat. And uh, it takes about uh, two or three weeks for it to heal and maybe three to four weeks from the time it's grafted before we start to see any growth come out of that bud for success. And this here is uh, sucker growth, what we call sucker growth. And all of this will have to be removed at some point, but it's the encouragement of changing the variety from what was here to a new variety and getting this vine to grow. By doing this operation, they essentially lose, without all the redevelopment costs of new trellis wires and new trellis and, and all of that, they essentially lose a crop and a half. In other words, they lost the crop for this year, that year of grafting and approximately half the crop for the next year, and then they're back into business. The advantage is they didn't have, to, the advantage is if their vines were healthy and disease-free and no known viruses in them or anything like that, they can do this successfully and get back into cropping within a year and a half of the desired variety that they have. The disadvantage and why you wouldn't do this is if this original vine had some sort of disease such as leaf roll virus or uh, fan leaf in it would be no advantage to grafting over. 11. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men, who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded, according as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid! But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness! For I speak to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. 
For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wert graft in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be graft in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear, for if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. On them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be graft in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways past finding out! For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things to whom be glory forever.